Welcome back. I want to talk a little bit about designing specifically for digital printing. Just uh, little things that I've noticed over the years that you can do to make your artwork look as good as possible even on a machine that isn't absolutely perfectly maintained because it doesn't really matter what printing company you are, your digital printing presses just kind of look awesome and then they slowly get worse and worse and worse and then they look awesome again. So you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure your artwork looks good and I wanna talk a little bit about that today. First, I need to empty out this toner, this waste toner, but no, forget that. Coffee first. Okay, one of the first things I wanna talk about is CMYK versus RGB color space when you're designing. And the reality as a printer, a lot of people ask me what should they give me, and I say, well, CMYK, uh, but I really don't care. If it's RGB, that's fine, uh, but what's printed might be just slightly different than what you're seeing on the screen. And in all reality, that's all that's happening. Um, when you are designing in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever software, and you have it set as RGB, you will see colors that are impossible to print uh, with CMYK inks. There's gonna be like your really bright blue and bright green. Uh, it is impossible to print on a printer, an offset printer as well. I mean, you just can't do it. So what your computer does is when you have it in CMYK, it only shows you the colors that are possible. So what you see on the screen is a lot closer to what the printer will give you. And that's really the, the only perk uh, to designing in CMYK, because if it's an RGB CMYK or whatever, you send it to the RIP, the digital printing equipment is going, I mean, it's going to process it and print it just fine. So rule of thumb is CMYK, but it really doesn't matter. And I'm sure some people will disagree with me on that. Okay, here's a good example of an image that I just scanned in. It's scanned in as RGB, uh, which is the way anything that you take a photograph of or scanning would be. And you'll see here there's a yellow and kind of green that's uh, it's kind of a fluorescent that will not reproduce. So here we go from RGB to CMYK and you'll see the difference. It muddies this out quite a bit. But that that's a good example of what is achievable from a CMYK press. Next thing I gotta talk about is bleed. For the love of Pete, if you're gonna have an image to the edge of your artwork, make sure you extend it an additional eighth of an inch. That's 0.125 of an inch. Now let me show you why. Just do it, please, please do it. Trying to find a good example of bleed in a book cover would be a good example. Now this book cover actually didn't have bleed when I got it. Uh, and instead of going back and forth, I just put it on myself. So the crop marks here are uh, where the book will actually be cut. So you see there's an extra eighth of an inch that's gonna get cut off on all four sides. And that makes a printer's life so much easier. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to cut it down slightly smaller. And if, uh, if it's a brochure or something that's getting folded, then dimensions are gonna get messed up. So include bleed. And if you're using software like InDesign, it's very simple to just go into your document settings and then include a bleed and put in the amount of bleed you want, which in most cases is gonna be an eighth of an inch. Uh, some people are okay with a little bit less. Sometimes you need a little bit more. But also remember, if you just put bleed on your document, you still need to go back into your document and 
move your artwork so it does extend past. I've had, had to explain that multiple times as well. Now, as I'm talking about bleed, I could also mention crop marks. And crop marks aren't really necessary to include in your artwork. <clears throat> Printers will add that uh, when we're imposing it and doing other things like that. Uh, so don't feel obligated to include crop marks. And personally, I would prefer people do not include crop marks because uh, what happens is those crop marks, if you're exporting from InDesign or other programs as well, can sometimes come through as a full color object, meaning that if it's a black and white document and, I've, and you have crop marks on it and I print it on a color press, it's going to cost me uh, more to print because it's going to register as a color document. So uh, I'd actually say don't include crop marks, but just make sure that your document is the correct size uh, that you want it to be printed as. Uh, and that reminds me too, uh, color bars, uh, center marks, all that stuff, forget about it. Don't include it when you're output and when you're exporting a PDF. Uh, you know, there, there's usually check marks to include printer's marks. No, we don't want that stuff. Now, just like taking a photograph of something creates a raster image. If you take something and put it on a scanner and scan it in, that creates a raster as well. Um, and you're going to need to decide if you're going to be scanning it in grayscale or color. Uh, that's important. You don't want to scan a black and white photograph as a color document because then when you go to print it, it's probably going to look a little blue or a little red. It's usually one or the other. And you need to scan that in at 300 dpi, that's 300 dots per inch. And if you're scanning in text, just a black and white text or uh, what's called line art, which is like a pen drawing where there's no gradients, there's no gray, that needs to be scanned in at 1200 dpi as a black and white image. And it's ge my general rule of thumb is to save those images on your computer as a TIFF document. And that's just because uh, if you save it as a JPEG, sometimes you will have you will create a uh, you'll have a lossy image, which means you will lose uh, information and you will degrade the quality. But a TIFF more than likely will save it as the highest quality possible. presses, a laminator, and a perfect binder all running at the same time, it gets toasty. Gradients are another thing you're going to want to try to avoid if you can. Printers have gotten a lot better at making it a gradual gradient. Like if you have a black to white gradient, it will just slowly go from black to white. Uh, earlier presses kind of make that choppy. Um, but along with gradients, any type of light coverage halftone area, which is what part of the gradients are. Uh, if you can avoid that in your design at all, I mean, that'd be great because uh, any light coverage is going to show an imperfection in the press. By all means, the press should be capable of printing that light coverage. But if, uh, I mean, that's just the way the world works. Not every press is going to be 100%. And if, you know, there could be a line, you know, a void or a dark line uh, that appears um, from poor print quality. Um, so one way to avoid that is to avoid the light coverage. And more heavy coverage solids are fine. You know, 60, 70, 80% coverage of any CMY or K uh, should be okay, uh, but when you go into like the 5-10%, uh, if one color is off a little bit, uh, it's going to, not only will imperfections in the print appear, the color is going to shift one way or the other. It could be a little yellow, it could be a little blue, red. Uh, so 
that's that's an option. If you want to rule that out, I would stay away from half tones of uh, the light uh, coverage variety. And actually, too, uh, half tone text. So if you have a uh, hundred percent black text. That's going to print perfectly. 100% cyan, magenta, or yellow text will print perfectly. But then when you get down into, you know, a, a mixture of CMYK to make any other color, if you have less than like 10% in any one of those colors, uh, it's going to shift. And also, if the registration is off on that press, that text is going to look a little blurry. Uh, so. That's one thing I do to make sure text is heavy coverage. Um, optimally, black text is, is obviously going to be the best. Uh, and also, if you are putting text, especially in InDesign, I sometimes see this. Some people accidentally make their text registration instead of black, and that means it's going to print CMYK on that black, and you will see a little bit of color outlining on there. Luckily too, with fiery rips, uh, there are a lot of built-in features that help halftone text that will outline each individual uh, letter in the font, and that helps it out. But, you know, why fall back on that? Just try and design accordingly to make sure it looks as good as you can. Now, as always, I'm sure I missed a couple things. I just make these videos up, up you know, spur of the moment. So if I miss something or if you have something to add to it, um, please put a comment below. And then uh, if you're watching this and trying to learn, make sure you go down there and check the comments out too and learn whatever I may have missed out. Thanks again for watching and uh, see you on the next one.